it certainly is going to be a different scene seeing the whole pride together because as a lot of you know one of the lioness from this pride was attacked and killed by one of the five Birmingham coalition members who are a coalition of five male lions and as sad as, as it is that one of the Inkahuma pride did lose oh, nice little yawn there did lose a pride member we are in a very very fortunate place because to be able to witness a pride takeover is something that doesn't happen very often it only happens every few years and sometimes even longer than that and we are in the right place at the right time we appear to be in the core of the takeover area where the Birmingham coalition are going to be competing further with the Matimba coalition and in all likelihood there's going to be some serious battles between five younger males and two older males so like I said it is sad news for the Inkuhuma pride that they did lose a member but it is a natural process and I've got some great news that I've just heard over the radio from Brent but I'm wondering if he wouldn't like to tell you what's going on in his vehicle while I loop ahead here so that is an option because it is quite thick and I've just heard an interesting update that I'm sure he may like to share with you a minute or two I don't think it'll take be too hard for us to get around them one time it's opened up quite nicely so let's try and get you one more view of these lion before we send you across to Brent oh they're looking hungry so we in with a little bit of luck here because hungry lion are tend to be more active than full-bellied lions and there's nothing better than seeing lions on the move and I think we're about to get a great little gap of them and view of them crossing this riverbed so hold on a second here oh. a little gap that I thought was going to be sufficient for us to squeeze through wasn't maneuver here I've stuck them with a tricky angle but take a quick look here now I'm fairly certain this would be the Inkahuma pride but I haven't seen Junior yet. So who knows, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's not the Inkuhuma Lions. They can be difficult to tell apart. But there are two younger lioness within this pride, which I think are the two we're looking at now. Some of you may be surprised to see the lion grazing on grass, but just like your domestic cats and dogs, they will do this to help try and purge their system. And I guess if there's no buffalo to chew on, grass is the next easiest bet. And interestingly enough, it's difficult to see, but there are a few other pride members also doing the same thing. So they all have their stomachs in sync with what is required. said a little bit earlier this pride has lost one of its members and John and Debbie have just asked how many pride members are there here is it six or seven well it should technically be seven considering they've just lost one member but as I did say there has been no sign of young junior yet so who knows where he may be 
and I actually haven't seen all of the line together. I guess you've been with me from the start, and from the moment we spotted them, I haven't really managed to get any good views. But if Junior is not here, then it would be six lioness that we could expect to see. And that's one of the playful younger lioness, probably approaching two years of age now. Okay, I'm just going to need to get back onto the radio quickly to give the guys a further update on the movement of these line. Now, oh, let's see whether this little riverbed is going to be easy to pass through. Looks like it shouldn't be a problem. All tight, everyone. To go up on a bank. Squeeze tight with those lots of bones. Oh. Okay, well, like I said a little bit earlier, why don't we send you across to Brent? He is having an exciting adventure on that other vehicle and I'm sure you'd all like to know exactly what he's up to. So while we get ahead of these lines, enjoy meeting Brent if you haven't met him before and enjoy the good news he's going to let you know about. Good morning and welcome everyone. Uh, my name's Brent and I'm going to be your guide on this sunrise safari. I have Brian on camera with me today. We've heard uh, what would be Tingana and Shadow mating somewhere in this area. So we're just stopping and sitting quietly and listening. So hopefully we hear them again soon and that means we can find them very quickly. What an exciting start to the morning. Scott with the Inkahumas off the bat and now we're just waiting here to see if we can hear the, that mating pair of leopard. yet the last time we heard the mating was probably around eight nine minutes ago so in the next five or six minutes um, we should be hearing the mate again and it's amazing the dawn chorus we can have franklins and babblers i'm quite confident they're somewhere within about a kilometer radius of where we are now we followed their tracks all the way down Twin Lambs Road and then they crossed the Mawati drainage onto Nyala Road South and then into the drainage and across Batalia Road. So they're here between here and Mumba Road. So hopefully they do mate again very shortly and we'll be able to hear them and then find them.
it just called? Uh, further, further to the south of us. So we're on our way again. Okay, hold on, guys. We are going to be going through some thick bush here. I just got to update the game drive, so um, I can possibly send someone up ahead of me who's not in the bush to see if they can get there and make sure we find these leopards. Station's audio of those. In where again, uh, it sounds like we are now south of the number road. directly in front of me here. There's a little track that runs on the edge of the drainage line that we're going to go down and around rather than crashing through this thick stuff. It also means we possibly going to be able to move a little bit faster. while they're mating. from us when we heard them so Brian keep your eyes peeled guys keep checking around if you see any movement if we can see them and um, if we can't we're going to go across to, to Scotty who's still with those in Kahuma lines uh, but we're just going to check up here I think they were around here but if they are on the move they could have moved quite a bit so we'll just check this open area very quickly has been south so what I'm also listening out is for Franklin or a squirrel or anything that might have spotted them as well
we go. And um, that's quite far away, but it's down towards the drainage line, there's a, a Nyala barking. So, and leopards mating again, so we know exactly where they are now. It is, I'm going to have to go back to drop down through this deep uh, drainage line. So in the meantime, we're going to cross back to Scotty, and hopefully he'll be back with us with the mating pair of leopard. Welcome back, everyone. And I'm very jealous that I'm not all with you guys on Brent's vehicle in the search for the mating leopards. But I think it's going to be a good option for us to all let Brent concentrate now on the task at hand. There will be a lot going through his mind. And let him rather find those animals and call you back to him when, you, when he gets lucky. So interestingly enough, we've repositioned the vehicle, and there are only five of the Inkahuma Pride that we can see. And I'm told Natasha and Rita are ecstatic and very happy to see the Inkahuma Pride again. I'm not sure when last they were seen, actually, because I have spent two weeks on leave. And since I've been back, I've yet to see them. Wouldn't it be interesting to know where Junior and one of the other Lioness is? Because those are the two members of this pride that are missing. I think it's one of the youngest Lioness. Together with Junior. And they keep looking back to the east, which is the direction they came in. So I'm not sure what they can hear there. Possibly those other two members of their pride and with the chaos that's been going on with the Birmingham coalition coming through and stamping their authority on this area I hope that the other two members of this pride have not become a casualty of the Birmingham coalition's warpath I haven't heard any updates on the Birmingham Coalition yet. They were last up in the north in Buffalo's Hook. So it'll be interesting to see when they do get found if there is a chance that they were together. Well, thanks very much to Maddie. Scotland because Maddie says that the Inkahuma Pride were seen on a neighboring property close to us quite recently and the story goes that Junior was continuing his antics of trying to mate with one of the lioness in this pride and actually the lioness the pride members ran him off now whether one of the Matimba males was there to chase him away I'm not sure but thank you very, very much for that update, Maddie. All the way in Scotland. And it hasn't only been Maddie that sent us through some information on the Inkuma Pride, but also John, who's in California and John says that the, that Junior has also not been seen recently with the Pride. Who knows, maybe Junior's realized that this Birmingham coalition who well, are coming into the area are not worth being around, especially for him. They will be more ferocious towards males because they are more direct competition, obviously. It's quite interesting that they killed the lioness because... That would be a future mate for them, potentially. So it doesn't really make complete sense for them to kill them. But I guess what we must understand is that the lioness within this pride may have been trying to actually defend Junior. And that would have left the Birmingham coalitions no choice but to eliminate that barrier between them and Junior.
apologies for the small tech issues during my opening. And some of you, Georgie and Christy, or Georgian and Christy rather, are wanting to know who's on camera and what's going on out here, who's in the control room. It's Veeam on camera with myself, and Brent is out with Brian on the other vehicle. And Tara is directing the show this morning with Nikki and Kirsty lending her a hand. There's an incredible amount of things going in on in that control room. And it's certainly a job that I do not envy. You have to be able to multitask because, like I said, there's so many different things going on. And that's why it's great that there's not only one director but another two helping to feed her all the necessary information coming through on the emails and the tweets that way allowing us to interact I'm guessing this pride may have moved quite some distance in the course of the night and that's why they're all fast asleep now I'm not convinced that they were actually found yesterday oh no they were found somewhere on Torchwood which is to the east of us but as a rough guess they probably moved about three or four miles, and who knows how many attempts they had at hunting last night, but possibly quite a few. We know for a fact that they were attempting to hunt buffalo just before we found them, and that's actually what allowed us to try, what actually allowed us to find these lion. A herd of about 20 buffalo bulls came stampeding past us, and we followed their dust cloud back into this general area. And after a bit of snooping around, we managed to get lucky and find them. So, the buffalo escaped the lion this morning, but the grass is not being so lucky. And it appears that all of them are quite intent on trying to purge their systems. Just to get onto the radio quickly to get a hold of Aubrey. He was expressing interest to come here, but then I think he realized that it's going to be very tricky for him to get into the sighting, so he's moved out, and I just want to acknowledge his message that he sent through to me earlier. Aubrey, I copied your message earlier. Sorry, it is tricky to get in here in the middle of this block, um, but I'll keep you updated if they get mobile again. Tara's just mentioned to me that the lioness at VM has just been filming appears to be covered in quite a few little scratches and scars. And I haven't taken a very close look yet. Look at how cute this is. It's incredible how gentle and caring these animals can be. And on the flip side, how aggressive and ferocious they can be, and I touched on it earlier, but we can expect to see a lot more violence between the lions in this area, and it's very, very exciting prospects because it's not very often that a pride takeover or a male coalition takeover occurs. Usually every four or five years you'd get something like we're experiencing now, because that's the general average reign of a coalition of male lions from when they attain dominance to when they start losing dominances. Anywhere from five to seven years, depending on the area. It could be a lot less than that and potentially a little bit more. And that could be a reason why we are seeing the little scratches and cuts on the lioness from their last altercation with the Birmingham Coalition where one of their members was actually killed. But having a look through my binoculars, I can't see any fresh scratches or cuts. I don't think... 
of, uh, I've just seen another lioness, the one on the far left. I think we're too far away to see, but I've noticed just a little scratch above her left eye that is quite fresh. So who knows, maybe there was an altercation of sorts. Brent is still trying his best to pinpoint where these leopards are. He's in an incredibly tricky area to find them because there's a lot of thick vegetation and areas which are inaccessible or very difficult to move through with the vehicle. But I can assure you that he is not going to give up and I'm feeling confident that he's going to get lucky and it's certainly good that we're allowing him to really focus and concentrate all his attention on trying to find these mating leopard. I'm sure a lot of you weren't lucky enough to see them yesterday on the sunset safari and it's a wonderful, wonderful spectacle to behold. Okay, well, I'm told that a lot of you are interested to know if the amber-eyed female is here. And I think Janet was one of the viewers expressing a lot of interest on that matter. And yes, I'm fairly sure I did see the amber-eyed female earlier. I'm not sure which one it is now. Vim, do you remember seeing her? This morning. Yeah. Uh, didn't notice. Okay, Vim was too busy working the camera and hasn't noticed her, but a little bit earlier on when we were in a different position, it alerted me or, or helped confirm to me that it is most likely the Inkahuma Pride because of that distinctively ambered eye female and the reason why I wasn't 100% sure is that two members of the Pride are not here. One Lioness and Young Junior, and thanks to some updates from Maddie and John, we've been told that Junior has not been present with the Pride when they've been seen on surrounding lodges in the last week or so. And it is something that we have discussed in depth. He has almost overstayed his welcome within the Pride and it is time for him to move on. So I'm guessing we will see him again, but who knows, maybe we won't. Wouldn't that be sad? But it certainly is a reality. And not only his age, determining the, f the fact that he does need to start moving off, I think the fact that the Birmingham Coalition has moved in has increased his motives for leaving. topic of the Birmingham takeover, it'll be a good opportunity to discuss and answer some questions that you've sent through, one of which is, why has the Birmingham Coalition not fed on the lioness that was killed by the Birmingham Coalition, as well as the cub? So the two lions, or, or actually the two little cubs, why have they not been fed on? And I think that's from Carrie. That question came through from Carrie. And it's a good question, Carrie. You'll actually find that in most textbooks, or maybe the slightly older textbooks, it will tell you that when predators kill other predators, they are doing it solely for competition and that they will not feed on the other predator that they have killed. Now that is not always the case, and I've seen on countless occasions lions feeding on other lions, Lions feeding on, uh, on leopards that they've killed. I've seen leopards feeding on cheetah that they've killed. 
Uh, I've also seen a leopard eat a jackal. So you do get a lot of consumption of kills made predator on predator, but it's not the, necessarily always the case. And why the Birmingham Coalition didn't do it, you'd have to ask them. There's no way that we'd be able to work out why sometimes they do and others they don't. When I have seen, in certain occasions, even full-bellied lions or leopards feeding on other predators. So it can't necessarily be attributed to them being very hungry and desperate and therefore feeding on another predator. But it is a good question, and wouldn't it be nice to know exactly what causes them to sometimes actually feed on their own kind? Oh, well, I must apologize. I wasn't kept, well, I didn't get myself fully informed on the topic. And I'm told that actually one of the two little sticks cubs that were killed by the Birminghams was actually consumed, and one wasn't. It was just carried around. So, again, it just adds more mystery to this puzzle. And hard to say why exactly they would feed on one cub and not the other. Interestingly enough, I've also actually seen a female leopard consume one of her own cubs that had been killed by a male leopard. It was a terrible sight and it happened very close to our staff village. And there was just the head of this tiny three-month-old cub left lying on the ground, staring up into space, which is not a pretty memory, but still interesting information to share with all of you while we're on the topic of predators eating other predators. There's a few Franklin alarm calling down in the riverbed below us, and Two of the lion, the two that you're watching, did lift up their heads and prick their ears in that direction to see what's going on, but they seem to have calmed down now, so not sure what it could be. Maybe, if we're lucky, it's the missing lioness and Junior making their way back. If not both of them, maybe just one of them. are pricking up their heads. Well, while we wait for these lines to work out what's going on, I'd just like to recap a little bit about what happened on the sunset safari yesterday. I did touch on it earlier, but we were incredibly spoilt and got to see Tingana and Shadow mating. And it was the first time since November that we've actually managed to see them mating or share with you leopards mating since we started filming. So really exciting stuff. Speaking of exciting stuff, I think we should send you back to Brent and see how his leopard hunt has coming, is coming along and we will see you all a little bit later. Welcome back guys, we've managed to catch up with the Shadow and the Tingana. Unfortunately they've given us quite the run around this morning but they're now right here in front of us and unfortunately very close to our southern boundary. So we are going to stay with them as long as we can. 
I just need to let Aubrey know where they are quickly. Aubrey, they are starting to move towards the uh, Gary man. in front of us and shadows just to the right. Unfortunately that road you see ahead of us um, is, is the southern boundary. show before they disappear. southern boundary but we have fortunately managed to catch them before they disappeared we will try to stay with them as long as possible hopefully they walk parallel to the road for a while but see if we can get a gap shadow. I think Tingana is even further to the south. Now she's walking parallel to him at the moment. And female leopards will cover incredible distances while they're mating and uh, will follow the males sort of on their patrols and come way out of territory um, for mating. Here yeah, there she is. Is spotted Tingana. You just make out those rosettes through the thorns there. How's it, Orbs? Sorry, I'm for. <laughs> yeah, sure. Morning, morning. Just a little bit too late before they crossed out of you. And we can just see them down in there. They might even duck back in, but probably not this morning, maybe this afternoon. Or they might even go ahead back towards Arethusa. 
Anchor Tugana is on one of his patrols and shadows following him. this mating going on at the moment especially since Shadow does have Sindile who's just over a year old and behind us you'll see James and Andrew disappearing who are out on tracking team been helping us follow that leopard those leopards so it is it is quite interesting that she is mating already uh, when Sindile is just over a year old now uh, it could be possible uh, that because this is the first time she's got a cub to this age that she's not quite sure what to do but the estrus cycles she cannot help um, she has no control over those those are a completely natural thing like ovulation in people so it will naturally happen and she has she will react to that hormone change in her body and Sharon and Lynn are, are wondering they thought female leopards don't mate until their cubs have reached uh, independence not so they don't, it's not usual. Um, maybe this is why Shadow's had such bad success raising cubs. It could be because her estrus cycle doesn't quite fit in with her cub rearing cycle. Uh, it's very difficult to, to actually know. But what will happen to Sindile now is a very, very interesting question. So Sindile is just over a year old. He is making kills for his, for himself at the moment. He's catching lots of little Franklins and dwarf mongoose and, and other things. And so now it's it's not unheard of for a leopard to become independent at, at the age of a year. It is very unusual. And generally the, the leopards that become independent at that age are females. Um, with the mating happening now, I would say, unfortunately, Sindile's sort of chances of survival have dropped um, somewhat. Not, not completely. It's no, by no means a no-hope situation. So it'll be, be quite interesting to watch what happens. I think once she's finished mating, she'll probably still spend time with Sindile uh, and take him to kills, etc. But if she is impregnated, and let's say if, she might not get pregnant from this mating, then uh, she would probably chase Sindile away. So he probably has another three or four months, three months with his mother, which would put him about a year, you know, a year and four months, which is very young for a male leopard to be out on their own. But it is not, it is not unheard of. I think the youngest male leopard ever heard of being independent was about a year and six months. But I know of it's normally females. So it's going to be very interesting to watch what happens. I think what we're going to do now is probably move along uh, and go look for Sindile to see what's happening here. Um, we've got Sean who's arriving now and uh, Cedric, sorry, and he's going to be heading off to, to have a look um, off for those mating leopards that have crossed there. As we, sorry, I'm just letting Cedric know which way they were going. So um, we're going to go have a look for Sindile now, and I'm going to get hold of James on the radio, who was the last person uh, with Sindile last night. And Lisa and Laura are wondering how far Sindile is from here, and I would say probably not more than two kilometers, but the sound of that mating and that sort of aggression, I think he would try to stay quite far away from it. One of the more, probably one of the most interesting sightings I've ever seen with leopards, it happened to be with mating, and it's the most leopards I've ever seen in one place. Um, there was a, a male leopard called the Campan male, down uh, a little bit south of here, and he was mating, I'm just trying to remember exactly now, so there was, six leopards that I saw in one sighting. There were four different females all trying to mate with him at the same time, which is really, really unusual and very unheard of. Uh, and him, and then one 
young male, probably a little bit older than Sindile, who had followed his mother into the situation and was just sitting in the fork of the tree panicking. And one female would mate with him, then the females would fight over who was going to mate next. And um, that poor male looked very harassed and he just kept trying to get away from all these ladies, but they just kept following him and following him. But uh, that was probably one of the most amazing leopard sightings I've ever seen. Just hang on, I'm going to jump on the radio quickly, get hold of James, so I can find out the exact last position of Cindy Lepp. James, James. tracking at the moment so that's why I might not be answering his radio but I have a general idea where Sindile was uh, so we're gonna go have a look there right now uh, James you're breaking very badly uh, could you just give me the exact last position of Sindile from yesterday's sunset safari just listen to the radio so information is key uh, as well as obviously tracking and all that comes in very much so but having really good information about where the animals last were is also critical and helps with finding animals much faster so we don't spend a lot of time zigging and zagging James I'm not copying you very clearly Another vehicle coming down the road. I just have to stop for a quick morning meeting and say hello. Ah, it's Ryan. How's it, bugger? How you, bugger? Nice to see you. And you, yeah. man. How are you off after those ingles? Um, they've already crossed into Little Gary. Yeah. Um, but apparently there's another one who says he's crossed over here, but I see James and I'm busy lunging me. Okay, awesome. And then there on Aanda, I don't know if you guys heard about that uh, Nkuma, Madonna and Mafazi. No, I didn't. Not from that. Oh, awesome. The others are on for your teller on uh, quarantine. Okay, you can hear they're looking for each other. So if you go to the rugby field, you'll probably see Perfect. that. Perfect. When's the next touch game? Dude, soon. Okay. Soon. Cheers, guys. Enjoy. You're in very good hands. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's really, really fascinating news. So um, it sounds like James is already on Sindile's tracks there. But I got some really fascinating noise, uh, news, and it's going to be quite interesting behavior to watch. So we're going to head there. So we're going to leave leopards for the moment. So there's two Inkahumas that are separated from the others that are on Arethusa, on our touch rugby field. And they are calling and trying to find the rest of the pride. So I think it might be quite nice to see that, see them trying to contact call, trying to find each other. And then possibly, hopefully, we can even see a, a, re, a, a reuniting of the pride. So I'm just going to get hold of Scott just to let him know about that. So he's also in the loop. Scott, Scott.
it sounds like one female and a junior are missing from the rest of the pride, uh, and that's probably who's on knob for and pan. Let's have a quick chat with James and Andrew here. Good morning, Commander Bond. Hello. Hello. Thank you for your help with the leopard. Well, gentlemen. you know, one does what one can. Um, he was on that termite mound there mm -hmm. yesterday evening. Um, and he likes that termite mound. Uh, I've checked the tracks along here. He has not come across. I haven't seen them going along here, but there has been an inordinate amount of traffic. Um, some squirrels alarm calling there, but no tracks along here. So I think we'll just walk into the block there and see what we can find. Cool, thanks very much. Okay. Just, so we're going to head across to Arethusa. There's a separate part of the Nkuma Pride that's been separated okay. on that side, and they're apparently oh. calling at each other. So okay. hopefully we can see a nice reuniting of the yes, Pride. Yes, that would be nice. Yes. Right, well, we'll good do luck. our best. Thank you, as you were. <laughs> Enjoy everybody. Hello, Brian. Andrew, stop looking so awkward on camera. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, everybody. The cameraman definitely preferred to be behind the camera <laughs> than in front of the camera. And I'm sure Brian can uh, test one to that. I love the camera. Not at all. <laughs> well, Brian is an exception to the rule. <laughs> Wonderful, busy morning, lots of cats around. So hopefully James and Andrew have some success following uh, young Sindile and we're going to head towards those lines at Knobthorn Pan. So we, we're crossing out of Juma at the moment. Uh, which means I have to change radios. So I'll change from our, our northern channel, which covers Juma and Buffalo's Hook and those and Torchwood, and cross across to the Arethusa channel, just to make sure we're exactly where those lines are in case they've moved, and so we can get in there and just get a full update for the Arethusa property. Standby one. I'm currently on Zebra Drive Junction with Triple M. Copy, thanks. Just uh, to let you guys know, the rest of the family are on Buyatela around quarantine periods. So there's a currently three vehicles in there. So we're gonna just check carefully here because this is really part of Sindile's favorite spots. So make sure he hasn't meandered through the block from where we saw James and Andrew and popped out around here. Yeah. Fantastic morning so far. Lots of cats are out. Uh, beautiful weather. A uh, little bit of cloud building up in the east, but nothing too serious.
time with um, some amazing mating leopards this morning. I, unfortunately, for some reason, there seems to be a gremlin in my radio, but I can get the gist, so I apologize if I don't get your name. I can just get the gist of the, the question that's coming through. Um, I think it's from Guy, and um, I'd like to know, why do mating leopards cover such ground? Well, generally, Guy, what happens is the male... Um, remay, sorry, uh, and w generally what happens is the male is out on, on patrol and he's heading out marking his territory boundaries and doing what male leopards do, trying to maybe sometimes increase and defend the boundaries which we've seen a bit of with the, uh, the Anderson male, Tingana and Mvula. And the females will move out of territory and follow the males on these sort of territorial marches to keep mating with them because the males won't hang around when the female wants to mate. She actually has to follow them. Uh, so that is why uh, they cover such distance. Male leopards can cover vast distances and do so regularly if they do not have a static kill. And this is what happens. The female will follow the males on their patrols. So that's the reason they do cover such vast distances. The males just going on in his normal patrols and Normally, female leopards are far more sort of sedimentary. They stay in a specific territory when they're not in estrus. And when they're out of estrus, I've seen the female leopards move three to four territories over to mate with a male leopard. And we've seen that here. Although traditionally where we've seen Shadow at the moment was in her mother's territory where she's been mating with, with Tengana. But we remember quite a few months ago, Scott and myself had that incredible sighting after we had a bit of a blip on a vehicle and we both went out and 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 hosted a, a show and we had then Mvula mating with the Kwatile female who I've only seen once very briefly since and she lives well to the south and barely even comes into Arethusa so she would have crossed Shadow's territory and Karula's territory to mate with uh, with Mvula then so we have seen it before and females will cover vast distances away from their natal or their, their territories to mate with the males. So while we're going to wait here, we're just going to slowly move up the road and wait for our chance to jump in to go see the junior and one of the Nkuma lionesses who's been separated from the rest of the pride. We're going to cross back to Scotty, who's with the Nkuhumas, and hopefully when you come back to us, we'll be with the rest of the Nkuhumas. So have a great time with Scotty. Welcome back everyone and very very well done to Brent and Brian who successfully located that mating pair of leopards just in time for you guys to get to see at least one copulation and so so happy that that happened and again very well done to Brent. Well the good news is that all of the presenters got to see their mating James managed to get his turn last night after I moved out of the sighting and now Brent's had his opportunity so very happy that all the presenters here on the ground obviously Jamie's on leave so she doesn't really count in this equation for now but really happy that everyone got to see it because it's a unique sighting that doesn't happen very often. Now on the topic of mating leopards I've got a question through from Jane in Durban and she's interested to know why do both lions and leopards have to mate for so many days and so many copulations? So, for those of you who don't know, it's three to five days on average that both leopards and lions will mate for. And roughly every 20 minutes there are slight peaks in intensity and slight troughs in intensity, depending on the weather and the temperature and obviously the stamina of both the leopards, or the lions, I guess. And the reason for that is that they need to induce ovulation and the mating process of cats helps greatly to induce the ovulation and it's not only the fact that they mate for three to five days but there's another component in that uh, equation that needs to be uh, spoken about and that is the fact that the male of both lion and leopard has got a barbed penis and that barbed penis also helps to induce the ovulation but it requires very many copulations and that is also what causes the intensity and aggression between the male and the female when they are mating 
it's painful for both of them and that is what causes them to growl and swat one another and create some incredible viewing. I saw some of the highlights of James uh, from James's viewing of the, the leopards last night and one of the copulations was really, really intense and there was a big cloud of dust that settled after they finished mating. It was a really beautiful scene, so worth taking a look at the highlights reel. Anyway, as you can see, the Kohuma Pride just behind me here are fast asleep, but such interesting prospects and exciting prospects that Brent's rushing over to go and view Junior and the other lioness that are missing from this pride. And who knows, even though it's not looking likely at the moment, it certainly is possible that they could even reunite this morning. Failing that, hopefully we'll be in the right place at the right time this afternoon. Take a closer look here. The lioness are all fast asleep. And just got another question through on the topic of leopards and lions mating, and that's from Kathleen. She's interested to know whether or not leopards, or sorry, uh, leopards will advertise that they are coming into season, just like a lioness, or I may have got that confused, will lioness advertise just like leopards do, and yes, basically, a lot of it will be through scent, male lions and male leopards will be able to smell when females are coming into season from the scent marks left on the various bushes and trees so there will be a kind of window period where male lion and leopard will start getting wind of the fact that there's a female coming into season and then they'll lurk around and follow those scent trails as their instinct will urge them to mate but in some cases, because we are in big, expansive wilderness areas, it will require a lioness or a leopardess to potentially even vocalize and try and call males if they haven't, for some reason, got wind of the fact that they are coming into season. So I've just heard somebody trying to contact me on the radio, asking to get into the sighting, so I just need to chat to them very quickly. A station looking for the Inkohumas, go ahead. Ephraim, they haven't moved. We are closest to quarantine, but we're on the western side of that small drainage that runs west of quarantine. So unless, if you feel confident, you can cross that, come from the northwestern side of quarantine. If you don't think you can cross that drainage, come midway down Zoe's and follow the western bank of the drainage. Negative, we are on the northern side of the clearings, northwestern side of the clearings, and west thereof. Apologies for that, we are in a bit of a tricky spot here. This morning has been absolutely incredible and it's only getting better. I think Brent's possibly got some more exciting news for all of you. So don't go anywhere. Change your meetings and appointments. Have another cup of coffee if you're feeling tired, if you're in a late time zone. Because this morning is only just going to get better. And I'm sure it won't be long before you find out exactly what I'm talking about. But I'll let that stew with you for a few moments. Well, I believe Brent has tidied his hair and is now ready to receive you. So... Over to Brent, enjoy, and we might bump into you in a short while. Welcome.
welcome back everyone and we've caught up with Junior and one of the Nkuma lionesses as they've crossed from Arethusa back into Juma. So definitely from their behavior so far, um, well not so much Junior's but the lioness, they are looking for the rest of the pride. And as two leopards crossed out, we got two lions in return that crossed in. So a really good morning so far. And I'm hoping we're going to hear some contact calling. See how Junior's testing the air there, trying to listen or they're listening and smelling for possibly the other members of the pride. So Scotty is sitting with the rest of the pride about as the crow flies, probably two, two and a half kilometers from here. And Angie in Ohio was wondering that. Uh, and hopefully they will reunite on the sunrise safari. I'm just going to move forward ahead a little bit so we can see the lioness as well. Behind him is the lioness. So they'll quite often walk, lie down, listen, might call a little bit and then start moving again. Warming up very quickly, so excuse me for a second, I'm just going to take my jacket off. now, a little bit cooler, now that the warm fleecy jacket is gone. You can see how Junior's getting a little bit of black in the top of his man. So interesting where these lions are lying at the moment, just beyond them there's a, a And that is where Brian and I, not that long ago, walked into Shadow and Sindila on a diker kill. And uh, I think it was Brian's first time walking into Leopard on foot, so it's been quite a popular little spot for Brian and myself over the last month or so. Just move again a little bit so we can have a proper look at them. Oh, look at that. Look in this little bush here. There's an old bird's nest. There we go. Difficult to say what it is at that age. Hasn't been used in a while. move again and she'll start the moving and then hopefully Junior will follow. Come on 
from Mr. Lazy Bones. So, junior, like all young male lions, or all male lions, um, will spend a lot of his time resting. And quite often you will always find young males at this age. And adult males, when a pride is moving, they'll always sort of hang back, lag at the back, sort of take the longest to catch up. boys around at the moment um, we're probably going to find a lot of fragmented pride structures happening uh, if they have been chased and we might not know about it you will have twos and threes and sometimes ones and they can get quite far away uh, they do generally make their way back towards them uh, towards each other but sometimes it can take weeks or days uh, for them to to join the other time the prides get split sometimes is during hunting uh, but more often than not, it is, I think in this case, will be because the Birmingham boys are around. So I think we're going to go catch up with the female who's up ahead. And I'm sure Virginia will follow suit. because they are tracking in this area that they might bump into some lions which would be not quite what they were looking for James James there she is Junior is going to come loping along shortly. we look at this lioness she's definitely an adult adult in which arcadia and charlene were wondering um and is this possibly if it is an adult junior's mother um well it's very difficult for me to say whether it's his mother or it's not it's definitely one of the adult females all from the pride and she is heading in the right direction at the moment towards the rest of the the pride footsteps I thought I heard Junior's footsteps coming through but I can't see through the thick bush just yet and where's she off to she's still moving uh, she stopped directly behind us so I thought I heard movement coming from just over there where Junior we left Junior lying up I just I can just see her through the back of the vehicle 
We're not going to move. She's stuck behind the car, so we're just going to stay here. We don't want to disturb her at all. And she's on the move again now. And I still can't see if Junior is coming through. I'm sure he will follow. And I'm, I was really hoping we might get a little bit of calling. I, I think they're going to keep to really low contact calls. That sort of... Oh, oh. I think they're going to try to avoid roaring at the moment with the Birmingham boys. They would not want to attract any attention to themselves. She's still moving. No, nope, stopped again. But hopefully we will see a really nice, nice re reuniting of the then Kuma Pride a little bit later. Uh, it might happen on the Sunset Safari. They might not get that far during the, the day as it heats up. And we're just going to move around. Yeah, she's walking off. has been separated from her survived. Uh, Tina from Houston says, according to her notes, um, on March 11th, uh, Junior and another lioness, I think one, a young lioness, were separated from the Pride for a few days, um, but they did eventually join up with them again. The reason I'm staying ahead with the female and not with Junior is she's more likely uh, to, to move and go through to the rest of the pride. Junior will just generally follow. And as I said, I don't think they're calling. Normally they would roar um, and find each other that way. But because of the Birmingham boys being around, oh, I can see the spider web. Just hang on a second. There we go. Um, because of the Birmingham boys being around, they're going to stay as quiet as possible and try not to draw any attention to themselves. They've already w lost one lioness to those marauding males. And... Strangely enough, in time to come, you'll probably find that those marauding males will become the dominant coalition over the Nkuma Pride. But for now, they will be trying to avoid them at all costs. Right. Still not following. Here he comes. He's on his way now. Here he comes. Mr. Junior. hungry, I mean, not by any means in starvation mode yet, but they could definitely do with a decent meal. And they've probably covered quite a big distance. I, I'm not sure, and we haven't, I haven't seen the Nkuma Pride for a while, and I'm not sure how long they've been separated for. that very flat cat uh, junior in the background and Sharon I'm wondering how old is junior now uh, Sharon I'm quite sure you guys will have a much better idea than me but as far as I know he's about three and a half at the moment 
And Josh was wondering, we just had a quick look at that little black tuft um, on the top of Junior's mane. And Josh, I'm sure you were wondering, due to the fact that Birmingham boys seem to have quite blonde manes, and he was wondering why we don't see more black men, male lions in this area. Is it a, a, a genetic trait or is it just completely random? It's definitely a genetic trait, uh, Josh, so it is passed down from the, the, the males that might have fathered him. Lioness is on the move again. Game park. Oh, one's that looks you can just see you can get a gap through there. There you go. Pretty boy. In that sphinx pose. And let's keep up with the ladder. Who's up ahead? down this jam path. It's a little bit thick in there, so I'm going to try and go around. Chat to Andrew quickly, who's also in this area. Andrew, Andrew. Andrew, confirm you copied the updates about the other two informers um, that have come from Triple M by the 150 North of Guy Main Junction. They're about halfway between uh, Rebecca's Philemon's dip cut line, our uh, junction, and and Triple M on the western side of that small drainage line that runs from the brown ivory tree there. typical lion behavior for lions that have been out marching the majority of the night walk a little bit lie down a little bit walk a little bit lie down a little bit So as you can see, these two are quite hungry at the moment. And I'm sure quite a few of you are wondering whether they would take the opportunity to, to grab a meal on the way while they're looking for the pride, um, or would they prioritize finding the rest of the pride? Uh, well, being a lion and being an opportunist, they would definitely take the opportunity to grab a snack along the way uh, before finding the rest of the pride, specifically because they are quite hungry but they would definitely, definitely take the opportunity to catch something on the way back to finding the rest of the pride. So while we stay here with the two missing Inkahumas, uh, we're gonna cross back to Scotty, who's with the rest of the Inkahumas to see what they're up to. Wow. 
welcome back everyone and isn't it some interesting stuff going on here on Juma this morning <clears throat> so like Brent suggested it could well be that the Inkahuma Pride will reunite with the other two members that you've just been with later this afternoon who knows though we could get lucky this morning and I know Janet asked earlier about Amber Eyes. I hope you're still watching, Janet. Because Amber Eyes is the one that we can see grooming another lioness. Sadly, because she's facing away from us, we can't see her. Amber Eyes, but she does have distinctively different colored eyes to the rest of the pride. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wanting to know if there are any updates on the Birmingham Coalition, I know Blair is one of those people and she's asked if we do have any updates on them from this morning. And sadly I have been listening to the radio but it doesn't sound like anybody has even found any tracks of them. But there's not too many people working the Buffalo Hook property this morning. And a lot of the landowners on the Buffalo Hook property to the north of us are not necessarily field guides, they are just landowners and sometimes need the professional guides to head across there to lend them a hand and nobody has headed there. Andrew and Ephraim who do have the ability to traverse there are here on Juma and I'm not sure where Aubrey is, maybe he'll head up there and have some luck finding them but for now sadly no updates on them It'll be really great to know when the two members of this pride did split up. And it's interesting that the two members that you've just been with are quite far east of this, pos of this position. Anyway, a lot does happen out here that we don't know about and a lot will happen after the cover of darkness falls when we're not out. So we can only speculate as to what exactly goes on in those late hours of the night. Now, we've got another question through from Terry in Santa Ana. And Terry's interested to know, when the Birmingham Coalition finally do claim this area, or potentially claim this area, will they immediately mate with these lioness? Well, not necessarily, Terry, because it does depend on the lioness and whether they are coming into season. But I feel that the timing could be very good because I think a lot of these lioness, especially the three middle-aged lioness, well, I think there's just two remaining now after the one was killed, that they could very well come into season. But there's no guarantees that it'll happen immediately after their takeover. Good question though, and what will happen though is that the Styx lioness, for example, if that one remaining cub does get killed, then that female could come into season very shortly afterwards for mating again. So I think there is going to be lots of mating, and sadly there is probably going to be more death and destruction caused by the Birmingham Coalition. So it is one of those things that is quite harsh and not always great to watch, but it is a necessity in nature and it does happen on countless times and it's very often the males of any predators, be it male lions or male leopards, that are the ones that kill the most cubs. And that is so that males that did not sire certain animals have the ability to get their genes into nature and that way it makes sure that nature maintains the best possible genes coming into the system at any given stage and only the strongest and fittest genes get passed through. Let's take a quick closer look now. I can see Amber Eyes is looking back and you might be able to get a glimpse of those very pretty eyes of hers. She interestingly enough also tends to make eye contact with us more than the other lioness within this pride and it can certainly be quite eerie when she does look straight through you.
So I'm glad you got a little glimpse there before she closed her eyes. Now, we are in a bit of a predicament this morning because as much as we'd love to stay with these lions, as we don't know what may happen, it would also be nice to go around and see what else is happening here. Who knows, maybe we'll find some sign of the Birmingham Coalition if we do go and look up further north towards the Buffalo Cut Line. And if and when we do go, what we will be able to do is potentially come back here a little bit later. There's, we're only halfway through the morning drive, so there will be time to come back. But why don't you guys decide? Let me know if you'd like us to go and search elsewhere, or if you'd like us to stay here and invest some more time with these lines. My guess would be, you can use it or not use it, would be that they are not going to get active again unless of course a prey item walks past and then they may be inclined to try and hunt it. But failing that, I don't think they're going to get up and move again. So that's my little two cents that you can possibly use to help make your decision as to whether we stay or whether we go. It's very easy to send through your thoughts as what you want us to do. And you would hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or send an email through to questions at wildearth.tv. And if Brian in Philadelphia, I think it was Philadelphia, is watching, we met Brian when he was out here on holiday at Arethusa about a month ago. And he said he's never sent through a question or a comment, even though he's been watching since November last year. So, Brian, if you are watching, let us know. And if there are any, else, if there are any other viewers who also haven't been letting us know what's going on in your lives, please tell us. It is wonderful to interact, even if it's not necessarily a question you want answered, but just let us know where you're watching and how long you've been following the show for. Because it really is wonderful that there's not just six or seven guests on the back of this vehicle, on it, like it would be on a regular safari. But hundreds and sometimes thousands of you joining in on the adventure. I must say a very, very big thank you to Morning Glory. And Morning Glory has done some research and found some awesome, awesome information for us. And that is that the Incoral Ranges, which isn't far from us, saw the entire Incohuma Pride, all seven of them, less than 24 hours ago. So the split was recent. And that's great to know. We don't necessarily know why they split, but at least we know when. And by piecing together all these little bits of information that a lot of the time we receive from you, the viewers, so a huge, huge thank you for the, these pieces of info, we can slowly help guess and fine-tune our speculations and theories as to what is going on. One potential theory that VM pointed out to me is that maybe the one lioness has separated herself from the pride in order for mating, and it's not uncommon for lioness to separate from a pride in order to go off and mate. And maybe Junior thinks he's the lucky guy. Although, having said that, I uh, don't think you've seen any inclination from Junior this morning in terms of any mating with the lioness that he is with. But it is just a possible theory that we can discuss and chat about because like I say, a lot of the time you can be surprised out here and the textbooks 
often only give you guidelines as to what may go on. The rest is a lottery. I think somebody may be trying to call me on the Game Drive channel, so let me just double check quickly. Well, a few other people have started a conversation on the Game Drive channel, so I'll try again once they've finished. Oh, well, we've got some more very interesting information. And that has come through from Brent now. And Brent said he's just got a message from the Encoro Rangers that the Birmingham Coalition are actually on Encoro. So, I guess we can piece together fairly well that the Birmingham Coalition must have chased this pride of lion. Maybe there was even a scrap between them. And that's when Junior and the other lioness may have bombshelled in a different direction. So, thanks for that update from Brent. And again... Slowly, with everyone getting involved on the safari, we can, as a team, work out what's going on. And isn't it wonderful how the teamwork plays such an important role in us finding out what's going on out here. So, happy to hear that a lot of you have said we should go off and look elsewhere. That would be, have been my decision, but we will come back here a little bit later. And maybe just take one last look at the sleepy line before we head off. Perfect timing. It looks like you may get one last look at the dark amber eyes of this lioness. Great. Well, there's a little glimpse of her eyes and we can now send you back to Brent with the rest of this pride and we're going to head off and go and see what else we can find. So enjoy and we will catch up a little bit later. Everyone, we're still with Junior. The lioness has just moved on, so we're gonna see if we can keep up with her, and I'm sure he's gonna come uh, following. So, really, really exciting morning so far. Leopards, lions, definitely a kitty cat morning. So, we'll see if she went through the drainage line or she went up to the side. There she is, I've just spotted her. is going to be a different story. Ah, there's a gap. So, really hoping, because it looks like there's some cloud cover coming in, um, that it's going to keep a little bit cool, which maybe will keep these lines moving. So, some interesting information um, that they were all seen together the seven in Kahumas uh, at the Inkoro waterhole last night or yesterday morning. And I know that the Birmingham boys were in that area last night. So that's possibly what's caused the split. So um, now we know, and they've obviously bombshelled to try to keep away from those males, and these two became separated. distance from here. And now we're in the perfect position to see when Junior walks back towards the female. Walk 20 minutes, sleep 20 minutes. Walk 20 minutes, oh actually not even 20 minutes. Walk 20 meters, sleep 20 minutes.
tired, kitties. So obviously, during times like this, it's quite a stressful time for the resident prides during pride takeovers. And we do have those marauding Birmingham boys coming through. And we've got to look at the sort of the, the whole picture. And I know it's sad that they killed some of the sticky cubs and they killed one of the Inkahuma girls. But if we look going forward, a five male coalition is going to bring quite a bit of stability into the area at a later date. Um, once this initial sort of pandemonium is over. Actually, might have heard something. No, eyes, eyes closed again. So, as I said, normally when the prides get separated like this, if it's due to a hunt or being left behind. They will call, they will roar at each other to find out where the others are. And we've seen a Styx lioness doing that on live safaris when she's been separated. But now, because of the fact of those Birmingham boys being in the area, um, they would rather keep sort of those contact roaring down to a minimum. Try and not let them know what area the lion's in. Here comes Junior sneaking up on Brian. He's going to right behind the back of the vehicle and he's going to pop up next to Brian in about there we go and flip. It's getting heavy. So basically directly, from what I understand, if we take a line and directly over from Junior's head, that's more or less where the, the rest of the pride are lying and probably about two, two and a half kilometers from where we are now. I'm not 100% sure that the Ryu nighting is going to happen on this sunrise safari i think more than likely on the sunset safari but as i said during this sort of time of pandemonium with the birmingham boys around and chasing lionesses and lions all over the place um, we are going to probably see splits like this quite often Two different lion sightings, albeit from the same pride, and now a leopard. It's young Sindile, Shadow's cub. I forgot to mention as well, of course, you saw this leopard's mother as well as Tingana mating a little bit earlier this morning. So it really is an incredible morning for big cat sightings. Three different leopard and seven different lions so far. 
And exciting to hear that the two line that Brent is now with are on the move. So maybe the reunite will actually take place this morning. I'm not sure what got Sindile's attention. He was lying up when we arrived here and James and Andrew came out on tracking team. So a huge thank you to them because it was James and Andrew that found this leopard for us. And as we arrived and got a bit closer, he's gotten up and headed off with his ears quite pricked up, listening intently in that direction. Who knows, I'm not sure if those two lions that you've just been with with Brent are vocalizing or contact calling. Maybe you can hear them and he's a little bit inquisitive. Anyway, let's try and get you a little bit closer. what our best option is, he's in a little bit of a thicket there, but we could be able to maneuver and negotiate around these plants and get you a good view from here. Oh, it's very thick. the vehicle running just to see if we do have a good gap here otherwise I can well he's on the move so let's just wait a moment and see what he does maybe he's heard some small prey up ahead We did discuss in depth yesterday that it's very interesting that young Sindile's mother, Shadow, is currently mating. And the reason for that is that it's a little bit early. Usually a leopardess will only mate at around 18 months. Oh, he's looking a little bit playful. Let's try and keep up with him. Will only mate at around 18 months or 15 months at the earliest of age of their, their cubs and the reason for that is usually it's at around 18 months to two years that they could give birth to the next litter and when they do give birth to the next litter they will then focus their attention on that litter and not on their older siblings because there's only so much work an adult leopardess can do I'm just going to wait here, it is very thick but he could pop out Having said that though, I don't think there's anything to worry about. Basically she, at this stage, could potentially give birth when he's 15 months old. And by then, he will possibly be experienced enough. Has he found a tortoise? Okay. I think he may have. Let me just take a closer look through my binoculars and then reposition. Uh, it's just a tortoise shell. But let me just creep forward to show it to you. It seems like he's lost interest and now he's running. Oh, he's run up into a tree, so we're going to scrap the tortoise shell. It is an empty tortoise shell, there's no tortoise in it. And we're about to get a great view, get ready for some screenshots. Oh, don't go anywhere, Sandila. Sadly, a bit of an overhanging branch, but I can't go further forward. We've got another big tree in front of us. As I was saying, though, I don't think there is anything to worry about. And even though she may have a new litter to start focus on raising, she will still be able to accommodate Sindila and he will still naturally linger around in her territory and I know Natasha has been interested in the ongoings here and has also asked is there any chance that Tingana will oh he's back onto the tortoise shell I think it's so thick but let me try and reposition again 
Natash is also interested to know if Tingana will now want to feel the need to kill Sindile. And that's not the case, Natasha. Leopards and lions will only kill cubs that they did not sire. So he's not in danger. The only thing that may happen is he may... Have you got a small gap there maybe, Vian? Let me just creep forward a little bit. That should be a bit better. Um, you can and will be able to see the tortoise shell just lying to the right of his shoulder. Basically, as I was saying, I've been a bit sidetracked trying to reposition, not wanting to miss any action now. But basically, Natasha and everyone else, I don't think we have anything to worry about. Simply that Shadow is mating a little bit sooner than normal. He will still be tolerated in her territory, even though she may not be as hospitable to him. Oh. This is awesome. What's he pouncing on now? Possibly a little insect. But now back to the tortoise shell. Let me reposition again quickly. It's such great action. But in a tricky spot to film. Luckily there's no tortoise in there getting thrown around and that's one of two different tortoises that we get in this area. We'll be seeing a lot more of them in the summer months which is something to look forward to. This is the Speaks hingeback tortoise which has got quite a flat shell. The other tortoise we get in this area is called the leopard tortoise. And it's got a much more rounded shell, almost like half a soccer ball. <laughs> that is an incredible. And I'm sure a lot of you are seeing similarities between your domestic cats and his playfulness now. Now, even if there was a tortoise within that shell, I'm not convinced his jaws would necessarily be powerful enough. <laughs> not sure his jaws would be powerful enough to crush through it. He's coming back now. He's stalking it. Oh, here he comes. And this is all great practice. Even though it's play, his muscle memory and agility is going to be fine-tuned and honed by these playful antics. It wasn't too long ago that the Inkahuma Pride unsuccessfully attempted to hunt some buffalo near Vuyatela Dam and shortly afterwards one of those liners, oh there he goes, crunched through a tortoise. I've actually never seen a leopard successfully breaking a tortoise's shell. It's not to say it couldn't happen and I'm fairly confident a big male leopard would be able to. stop here because he is running around so much. I don't necessarily need to get much closer and it'll be a bit easier for VM to film all this action from a bit of a distance. Let's see what his next moves are. I'll be ready with some screenshots. I'm getting my camera ready because I think at any moment he could 
starter's next playful manoeuvre. Or you could just get comfortable in the shade. So, now do we give him a moment or two to plan his next attack, or do we reposition? Let's give it a moment or two. It'll be interesting to know when next he gets to see his mother, because she is busy mating. And there would be no issue of her coming back here with Tingana. The problem is, though, is that I feel, and in most cases with female leopards mating with males, it's the male who will determine where they go, and the female will actually stay with the male on his usual path. So he'll carry on with business as normal, continuing to patrol his territory and scent mark. So I think she's going to be touring into some far-fetched places that she may not have been before in her adulthood, maybe when she was a cub being raised by Karula here, she would have seen these places, but not for, well not in the recent past, not in the last few months, she's headed quite far east, and now south, into some fairly uncharted territories, and I guess only time will tell whether we do get to see them reunite, and three of them could be potentially in the same sighting in the coming days or he may be left to fend for himself for a while which will be good for him good practice and he is certainly capable of hunting we saw him not actually physically catch a Franklin the other day but we were repositioning the vehicle the next thing we knew he looked up and he had a Franklin in his mouth and not long before that he had been found with a dwarf mongoose, so he can make small kills, and those will certainly be enough to sustain him, and will in all likelihood be his main source of food when he does start to get kicked out by his mother when she needs to start raising this next litter that she's busy making at the moment. Let's reposition quickly. He seems quite comfortable there for now. have sent through some information saying they've actually seen Tingana, Shadow and Sindile in the same sightings and that's completely true and thanks for reminding me of that and those have been sightings where they've been sharing kills together or in all likelihood a kill that Shadow made and Tingana stumbled upon and started helping himself to So thank you very much for reminding me of that. Who knows, something that we could possibly see, and it is something I have seen in the past, is five leopards together. And it's a fairly similar scenario to this. It was an adult leopardess who had one single male cub that survived till maturity, similar to Sindile now, although he was considerably older than Sindile when his mother gave birth to the next litter of a young female and a male cub and we were lucky enough to on several accounts see five leopards together the older male cub the two younger cubs one male one female the mother and the father so all different shapes and sizes and I did mention yesterday that the older male cub was often actually left in attendance with the cubs, almost like a babysitter, and it certainly will increase their chances of survival having a big brother around who would be able to possibly alert them to any dangers and try and stick up 
for them if there are any small predators that could try and kill them. It's not uncommon for pythons and smaller predators like maybe jackals or servals to kill young leopard cubs. And like I said, by having a big brother around, that could make the difference for those two younger cubs surviving. So that is a possible scenario that we could look forward to in the coming months. It should only be 90 to 100 days until Shadow gives birth after this mating. Which will be kind of around Christmas time, I think. Hold on, where are we now? We're in August, so it's October, September, November, early December. So that's something to look forward to over the festive season. Some new additions. And even though she may give birth around the end of November or beginning of December, we would in all likelihood only see those cubs two weeks after she's given birth at around mid-December as a rough calculation. Well, what a beautiful day. It's heating up quite a bit now. There was a funny layer of clouds over us earlier, but that seems to be disappearing. And the morning is still not over. Things still could even get more exciting. Who knows what other animals could still be found before the end of the drive. It's certainly worth sticking around. Who knows, maybe Karula is going to pop out. She's been lurking around, but hasn't actually been found for the last few days. That would be incredible. Anyway, we've got a question through from Tony, and it's a great one, asking about the likelihood of shadow mating with the Anderson male in order to give him false sense of fathership. It is likely, and I think it is something that could very, very well happen. So with a little bit of luck, we will be in that western corner of Arethusa where the Anderson male is spending time slowly pushing into Tingana's territory and get to see her mating with him. Now, it wouldn't be the first time that that's happened, and it's been accounted for on many occasions that a leopardess may, will mate with even more than one male, and possibly two or three or four, in order to give them the false sense of fathership to increase the likelihood of those cubs not being killed by any one of those males. You must remember at certain times in any given area, there may be kind of hostile environments for leopardess with regards to raising cubs because you can get scenarios where a few young male leopards may be slinking through the area kind of like quarantine and Kunyuma will be slinking through different areas now where they may not necessarily be dominant but will still kill cubs that are not theirs so those kind of situations do occur and I think Shadow may have been unlucky in her initial litters that she lost all of them of so this is the first adult leopard that she's managed to raise till this age the rest she's lost at a very young age and a lot of the time that would be because of male leopards killing the cubs so good question tony and that is something to look forward to it would be great to see the anderson male again and if he was mating with shadow well that would be incredible so it looks like Sindila has calmed down a bit and is no longer as playful as he was a bit earlier. Although, look what VM spotted. There's a Franklin. And it's not too far away. I'm sure he's going to get visual of it shortly. And as soon as he does get visual of that Franklin... You may have just seen it moving behind those bushes there. He could well plan an attack. And I hope Cochina John is watching. She dubbed Sindila, I think it was yesterday, the Franklin Assassin. And... I think that's a fitting term for him and maybe he will prove 
his worthiness of this title in a few moments. I can't see the Franklin anymore. But there is a chance it could pop out. We are going to keep a close eye on the situation and if anything does heat up, we'll be sure to let you know. But we're going to send you across to Brent and see if he's got any updates for you. I think he may have a little trick up his sleeve. Enjoy and we'll see you later. Welcome back guys. Um, I left those lines and there's only very few things you can make to leave those lines. But we're with the Queen of Juma. And Karula has just crossed into our property. We just found her. We heard a report of her crossing. And she just seems like she spotted a dike here. Um, and she's going to try and move towards it now. I'm going to try and stay a little bit further away from her while she's stalking. this morning, two different lion sightings, it is definitely a cat day. So she's off to my left, I'm just trying to move us into a good spot. I don't want to get too close to her while she's stalking. distance from her at the moment obviously we don't want to uh, disturb I'm just gonna try there's a road she's parallel to us see Brian there we go Brian's got her she's in full stalk mode we can't see what she's stalking she's can just pick her up and you can see how amazing that camouflage is Just see those rosettes through. She's got very low. So guys, quick link back to the other vehicle. Something really exciting is happening there. We'll be right here when you get back. Welcome back everyone. And can you believe it? Four leopards in one drive now, Karula. I guess if it wasn't for her, Shadow wouldn't be here and neither would Sindile. And sorry to rush you away, it looked like Sindile did spot the Franklin and he got up and just repositioned ever so slightly and I thought he was getting into full stalk mode and he could have burst after that Franklin very quickly and we would hate for you to miss any of this action. We've yet to actually film him successfully catching anything. We've seen him attempt to catch prey. We've seen him with prey that he has already caught, but we've yet to see him successfully strike. Well, it looks like things have calmed down here, but he's not as focused as he used to be. He's, his head and ears locked in that direction of the Franklin, and he got up in stalk mode, and then just lay straight back down. And it's interesting, the position where Brent has found Karula is fairly close to the area of where Shadow and Tangana cross south over our southern boundary. And I wonder if she could hear the antics going on. Oh. 
he's flattening himself to the ground there and I can't see what it is he's looking at. There's quite a few very small birds flitting about. So it's maybe those little birds that have caught his attention now. Or maybe it's the Franklin, I'm not sure. like he's thinking about making a move but just doesn't seem to want to commit to it. Okay well I think the situation here has diffused and again, it's important for you to know that we don't want you to miss anything, so sometimes we will miscalculate the links. Anyway, we are going to send you back now to Brent and Karula. Enjoy, and we will call you back here if anything else happens. See you later. Welcome back. Isn't this exciting? Action everywhere. Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, we saw uh, what Karula was stalking. It was a little grey diker, but the diker spotted her and ran off. I haven't seen Karula in what seems like an age um, from on a live saf safari. I found her on foot in a drainage line where we couldn't get a vehicle to but really nice to be able to show you guys the queen and you can see she's in great condition. So if there are any new viewers out here, um, the other leopard, uh, the first leopards we saw this morning were Tingana, which is an adult male, and, and Shadow, which is the daughter of Karula. And that little guy you've just been watching stalking Franklin with Scott is Sindile, who is Shadow, um, Shadow's son and Karula's grandson. So, an amazing lineages of le a lineage of leopards we have access to here on Juma and Arethusa private game reserves. So she's. Very nice to have Madame Karula back. She's definitely one of the trickiest leopards I've ever had to trick in my a track in my life. Um, she doesn't seem to walk with purpose in a straight line. She changes direction often. This could be because she hunts quite a lot during the day. So when we're tracking her, her tracks might change because she is hunting. But she is definitely one of the harder leopards that I've ever had to track on a regular basis. She's on the move. I'm hoping she's going to head towards the treehouse waterhole for a break. She's not too far from here. It looks like she has eaten quite recently, so looking in really good health. But really great to be with Karula. Watch out there. I hope everyone One of the great things about following Karula is that she loves a termite mark. So she often gets into these wonderful poses for us. So hopefully she does that again this morning. It's going to be a bit thick through there. Oh no, she's going. we can find a way around this very large termite mound. Try and try to keep an eye on her. Like this is. And we're just going to try and find a way through this really thick block. Hopefully she's going to come out onto the road very shortly. 
You okay with that? Obviously, we're not going to go crash in through her after her. We're going to try to keep coming out of her in the slightly more open country here. Yeah? Still got her? Go ahead. Here we go. Still going east. Watch out there. I've lost it. Oh, she's done a disappearing act in that ticket. We're just going to loop around where we can get a little bit closer. through that bush it's amazing in this how the, the the rosettes just blend into this dry african bush but here she comes Scotty's just asked me to give him a call on the Game Drive channel. Scott, Scott. Scott, probably 150 meters to the northwest um, of your last position with. Uh, I think it is this closely this close. Montoine. to Rebecca's Road, you'll see where my tracks come off. So, definitely on the hunt. She might have heard something, she's stopping to listen. She's using the available cover to move through the bush. And as you guys can see, she completely ignores the vehicle and she must have been two feet from the front of the vehicle as she passed us. And there's a good chance there might be some impala and other antelope towards the treehouse waterhole as it starts warming up. Hopefully 
tree. She doesn't take us to through too thick a bush. Oh, and she's changing direction again in true Karula fashion. Termite mound up ahead. So, using a little bit of high ground to scan the area ahead to see if there's any potential prey species ahead. Some of you might be new viewers uh, who haven't spent as much time with Karula, who's also known as the Queen of Juma. And she's been the dominant female leopard in this area for a very long time, although at the moment her daughter Shadow is moving into her territory slightly. And Heidi was wondering how old is she? Well, Heidi, she was born in 2004. just stopping, she's listening, she'll be listening for the little sounds of impala feeding or even looking for the little movement of a dike or a stenbok. Absolutely stunning animal. So if you guys are new, we are 100% live. You are seeing this leopard at the same time as me. We also are able to take questions about what we're seeing. And if you're not sure how to do that, you can email us on questions at wildearth.tv or you can use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Caroline, get on the move again. Just, she almost had a sh shimmering twitch on her belly and Lucy in South Bend, Indiana noticed that and was wondering why that was. Uh, well, Lucy, it's uh, to keep the flies away. It's a little twitch. You'll see lions also do it from time to time. Watch out, Brian. We've got to go through quite a little narrow gap here. back to you um, and it's just to keep the flies off that little shimmer will stop the flies from settling on her body and we've still got her here she is getting straight down the treehouse water holes up ahead and we're going to try jump up ahead of her so we can see if there's anything there and then we can position ourselves so we don't interfere at all still got her by yep a lot of impala and other animals around this water hole I can actually see you can you still see her? yeah is she moving again? no she's still stationary yeah she's coming now she's coming yeah. she's coming straight towards us and there's some buffalo bulls oh, which are a little bit big for her we're just going to stand by here giving her a bit of space in case there are any prey species around the buffalo I think a little bit too big for her though here we can just see her there Stopping and listening. So on the move again, back.
So she's avoiding the water hole now. She's moving away from the water hole. Uh, and that possibly could be because there's some big old buffalo bulls there. Um, so we're going to move along again. What she might do is approach the water hole from a different angle so she can have a drink. Um, but she'll try to avoid this big group of buffalo bulls that's off to our left here. We're just going to scoot past the buffalo bulls and try to keep with Karuda. So we have seen shadow in this area very recently and Siberia, one of our zoomies, uh, would like to know if they happen to come across each other in the same area, would they uh, collectively hunt and help each other hunt? And Siberia, I, no, I don't think they would. It's, it's, I don't know of any record of female leopards helping each other hunt. And Brian's just telling me that she's changed her direction a little bit. I just want to show you, this is the reason why she probably turned away from the water hole. You can see all those buffalo bulls there. But we're not going to stay with them. We're going to try to keep up with Karula. You can still see her. Station. We also have a Karula just uh, to the south of Treehouse Dam, slowly mobile and northeast. Look, they're using that high vantage point to see if there's any potential prey species up ahead. So, same as the termite mound, but now she's using down a uh, using a marula that's been pushed down and look at those ears suddenly twitch up there might be something down there so we're just going to try to figure out what she might what she, what she might have seen um, as I said, there's quite often Impala and Inyala in this area. And definitely her body language changed slightly since she went up there. The telltale sign if she's seen something to stalk is when she comes down. Seems like her body language changed a little bit, so not as alert as it once was. She's not trying to keep as flush to the branch, so we're just going to try to get a bit closer to her. And she's using this tree as a vantage to check all around. Yeah, coming down. So if she had seen something potential to hunt um, she would have come down almost creeping on that branch there we go scent marking again and on that uh, Zai is asking how long does a scent mark last for uh, Zai I'm not 100% sure but it can last from a human smell point of view um, a couple of days and it smells like buttered popcorn believe it or not so quite a pleasant smell for urine but I'm sure for leopards it probably lasts a week or maybe even two. They might still be able to pick up the faint remnants of that even after three weeks or four weeks. But I think the real strong sort of messages will be lost in, in about two weeks. So fortunately moving through 
a slightly more open bush path than she was a bit earlier, making it a little bit easier for us to keep up with her. Because she's hunting, unless she's stationary, I am keeping a little bit of distance between us uh, so as to not affect anything or uh, chase anything away that she might be stalking. see that little flick of the skin to keep the flies off. Oh, she did it just now, she might do it again. There we go. Looks like she might have seen something. I can't see anything ahead, but I'm going to grab my binoculars and have a closer look into this bush. But you can see how she's suddenly a little bit more alert. Definitely might have seen something. I can't see what she's seen yet. So I'm just going to sit here and try to see what she's possibly spotted. Andrew, we've still got Karula. Um, she's now to the southeast of Treehouse Dam, Mobile East. Mabel. Copy, no problem, make your way. Okay, so you guys, you can see, sorry about that, just had to let the other guys know where we were, but you can see she's definitely spotted something, and you can see how her whole body movements has changed. She's far more considered in the way she's moving. She's not walking as fast as she was. She walks, walks, stops and has a peek. Whatever it is, is sort of off the front of our vehicle. We, or maybe a little bit to the left. I can't see anything yet. It could be just judging from the way she's stalking, it could be quite far away. See how she's getting lower as she gets closer to whatever she might have seen? This is the reason I've stayed further away from her while she is stalking. So if we were right behind her, we might give away her presence. And as you can see, with this sort of early onset spring, these sort of greys and greens and yellows create such wonderful camouflage for an animal like a leopard. And that's a comment from Derek. And Derek, I agree with you 100%. 
and we can see how sometimes she just sort of melts away. There we go. See how far more considered her steps are. I'm still not able to see anything just yet. Brian, do you spot anything? Mm, not yet. might have seen something else. Might be something that's a bit better or easier behind us. I can't see anything there either. I know there's those buffalo bulls behind us somewhere. changing direction again and it looks like she's almost stop stalking now again and her body language has changed and she's on the walk heading back towards the water Maybe a herd of impala or something might have popped down there. And she can access now without having to go through those buffalo bulls from the drainage line behind. she spotted oh I don't know if she has spotted it there's an adult and yellow bull there Kula's 60 meters top of a termite mound to our right but if there's an adult and yellow bull it's possible there might be females or young and yellow which would be a bit more suited for her because if she did she's quite capable of killing a big adult and yellow bull but she would have a big trouble trying to get that into a tree. So the Nyala hasn't noticed her yet. I actually don't think she's been seen the Nyala. But she is heading towards that Nyala. Now, now she's spotted it. Oh, an adult male in Yala is quite a big, big prey for a small female like Karula. And as I said, it's not that she's unable to catch an animal that size. It's just really difficult to for then put it in a tree to protect it from hyenas and lions and other predators. And that Inyala has no idea she's here yet. A squirrel spotted her. And then Yala suddenly become a bit more alert. Can you hear the squirrel alarm calling? But well, the squirrel that's a lot, uh, spotted her is behind us by quite a distance. But then Yala is definitely um, a lot more alert than he was 30 seconds ago. And there's a diker as well. Oh, it's all going on here. Running past the Yala, there's a little diker, which is definitely far more suited to Karula. The 
attack his soul Karula and took off. But that Inyala bull is still standing right there. So guys, really, really exciting news. We're gonna extend drive to follow Karula to see how this hunt pans out. Myself here, Abel making their way and currently showing interest in Nyanga. Um, best access is if you come on the southern side of Treehouse Dam. On Treehouse Dam Road, we're probably about 150 meters past a large group of Dugger boys. AFM. So it looks like she's decided the dike is a better option even though it ran off, that the Zinyala might be a little bit too big for it. I'm just gonna sit here quietly and see which way she goes. I'm still not sure whether she saw that in Yana. Can hear him feeding again. It looks like. She can still see the dike, even though we can't. And you can again see how her body language has changed. She's a little bit lower. Oh. Game's up. Then Nyala spotted her. Can you see the dike? Is it behind us? No, not at the moment. is about to be broken by a deep bark from that Inyala. There's something else we can't see because she's going very low. I'm going to try to squeeze her on my seat. See if I can see where she's looking. But the Inyala is definitely almost cottoned onto her and if he starts alarming and he's actually coming forward a little bit to check to see if his eyes were confirming because once he spotted her and alarm calls she'll sort of pretty much give up most of the hunt oh squirrels have spotted her as well Nyala is looking straight at her. She's still interested in something up that side. This is 
So guys, unfortunately, and we'll wait a few more minutes, but I think uh, the game is up with that in Yala spotting her. He hasn't started alarm calling yet, but as soon as she moves, he will. Just gonna wait two minutes, two minutes, three minutes, just to see what pans out here. But as I'm afraid, you can see her body language has changed quite a bit. She's realised that that Anyala bull there has spotted her. You can see he's actually coming closer. And as she walks off, I think we're going to get a bark very shortly. There we go. The game is up. Yeah, that Anyala alarm calling nicely now. And Karula's body language has changed completely to the side of us here. So I'm just going to get us one nice, lovely view of uh, the Queen. Unfortunately, her hunting was spoiled by that male in Yala. I think she was still very interested in that diker that ran off. Oh, she's coming back towards us. So here we go. You can see the body language has changed. She's not very much worried about hiding now. And Yala is standing opposite, barking at her. Very distinct leopard's tail. Almost always goes up once they've been spotted. But what an incredible morning, guys. Four different leopards. Two different lion sightings and um, we thanks very much for joining us and thanks for staying on a little bit over with us uh, don't forget to join us for the sunset safari I'm definitely going to be on the trail of Karula I think uh, to try see what she's going to be been up to during the day I think she's gonna, probably going to now find a nice shady spot to rest for the rest of the day and uh, thanks for all your questions we really do appreciate them it's been an absolutely epic sunrise safari uh, Shadow and Tingana mating. Scott had Sindile that was found by James on tracking team. We had the two lost in Kuhumas and Scott found the main in Kuhuma Pride. I don't think you can get a pretty much more cat-filled morning than that. So for the last little bit, we're going to hand you over to Scotty uh, and the lost in Kuhumas. Welcome back everyone and 